today's video I will go over the method of projection mapping. Uh, I will be using Photoshop, Cinema 4D, and After Effects. Um, the idea with projection mapping is taking artwork and then creating geo to, to build a perspective. Um, if you just animated a camera going up and scaling, it won't give the effect of perspective. So what I'm going to be going over is the methods that I use to, to take this, either a mid-journey or any other art, and prepare it for projection mapping. And this is the final result. And then here is the camera animation. So you can see that it's that there is perspective um, by by building out this kind of cave, these cave walls, and then and then I added some spheres for these ball-like objects. Um, this was a relatively simple um, piece to uh, to to. Do projection mapping. Um, other other pieces, uh, say for instance, you have like uh, like buildings, and you want to uh, create a parallax, or you want to animate between them. You're going to have to go back into Photoshop and then paint, or kind of um, uh, rebuild a lot of the geo that you project. Otherwise, when you Otherwise, when you have a camera animating, let's see if I can find a, a res, uh, good result. Here, I'll do this. So if you do this, you can see that this is duplicated because I'm using this camera right here as a projector. And it's the, the same as if you would take a um, just a projector in real life and you were to shine uh, the video on a surface. Um, this can be applied to you know, real world stuff as well. Um, but if you project from this perspective and you want to animate the camera going this way, you're going to run into some issues. So in Photoshop, what I did was I determined which the layers that I wanted to um, extract. So I wanted the environment. Oops. Let's rasterize. So I wanted to get rid of this background. And you can just use a magic wand tool. Or you can use the, the, the pen tool. Whatever, whatever is easiest for you. Um, the pen tool, it, 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 you'll be able to really hone in your, your edges. Um, they won't get any artifacting. If you were to use this, you can see that sometimes there's little bits and pieces um, that if you don't catch, it's gonna be displayed in your image. And for my final result, um, I had some of that, but I knew that I was going to blow out this uh, this cave egg, the entrance um, and create like a like a shine. Um, so it didn't really didn't really make sense to really uh, take that amount of time and and do that. Um, so this is the environment, and then with the character. What I did is I knew that I wanted to uh, animate the, the cloak. So if you were to just throw a cloth simulation over this character, everything would, would simulate. Everything would be kind of warped in and, and blowing in the wind. So what I, do, what I did is I extracted the cloak and then I just did a pretty um, rough kind of silhouette of the character. Uh, he's very rectangular, um, but 
again, I knew that having the cloak blow um, and animate, this didn't really, it didn't really um, uh, affect the overall um, final. So after you get all your layers out, you want to save, you want to save as PNG. And here you can see I saved these pieces as individual PNGs. And with PNGs, it preserves alpha. Uh, this is very important. Um, otherwise, well, it just wouldn't work. Um, so after I exported that, I imported it in Cinema 4D and I created a default material. Um, I knew that I wasn't going to relight this scene. So just creating a default material and then applying your artwork to the luminance. And what that does is it's, it's just a straight uh, color uh, shader. Um, light won't really affect it. It's just, uh, it's just a straight. And as you can see, the alpha, once you bring it in, it doesn't preserve it. So you want to copy shader, go to alpha, and paste. So here you can see that it, it preserves the alpha. And that's what I did with all these. And to set up a projection, you want to set up your main camera. Um, I had I zeroed it out with X, Y, and then rotation. And then with Z, um, I dropped it back just a little bit because I knew that from the origin, which is right here, that I want some space to, to build to build my art. So once you have your projection, you want to apply it to um, your main group. And then clicking the shader right here on your on your main group. It's normally at UVW mapping, um, and that's not going to work. You want to do camera mapping. And since you have this shader, it preserves the uh, the the uh, the resolution. Um, and, a, and another thing to do is before you bring in everything, before you start, uh, well, from the get-go, you want to match the resolution of your image. So you can do that by going to Photoshop, image size, and then taking note of the width, which is, which is 1500, and then the height, which is 2100. And you can copy. I usually like to um, always have the this snap it tool or snip it. Uh, when I want to preserve information, so I don't want to, like, say, for instance, I'm done with Photoshop and I don't want it to be a resource hog. I just do new. And here you have a, a handy a handy image where, you know, it doesn't take up any resources. You can throw that down here. Go back to Cinema 4D. And then just enter 1500, 2100. And another thing too is I'm just doing standard. Um, I usually use Redshift when I do my pieces, but it, it's it's totally unnecessary. Um, I knew that I wasn't going to bring in any lights, uh, so I just wanted a straight straight render um, using the the artwork that I had. So once you throw it in that main group and you have this um, all set up. Um, when you when you enter in your resolution, you can hit calculate, and it it preserves the the resolution and it uh, projects it correctly. So then you can start bringing in um, random, well not random, but um, but objects. So here I have the environment, and what I did is I just started from a plane. I angled it to the what I thought was the correct um, uh, perspective. And this is really important when you when you start 
bringing in these individual objects, especially with something like this main cave environment, um, you want to you want to pay close attention to, to getting the perspective correct because you're going to be building everything else off of that. So just as long as you have this dialed in, everything else will be a breeze. So that's what I did with this environment. And just throw it back under that group. And since you have that shader in that main group, anything you bring in here is going to be affected by um, the artwork. So if I brought in this cube and I, I brought it underneath the group, it's being projected onto the cube. And I'll, I'll show you what, what's happening here. So again, it's based off of this main camera projection. So this would be incorrect. So you want to look at your image and you want to determine, like, there are these little balls that, that are down here. You want to bring in spheres. And what I did with those is I just kind of kind of moved them, scaled them, and made sure that there's nothing that you can see that there's some tearing right here. But I know that my camera animation is not going to show it. So here's my camera animation. So just throwing in all these geos, I brought in this really simple kind of, you know, kind of cube just for this ledge. And then I brought in some more spheres to, to add some variance to it. And then for the main background, I was realizing that this is some hard edges. This is not what you want. Uh, it's going to look like complete garbage. So what I did is there were some details that were being lost. So I just threw a plane back there. And then here you can see it preserved those. And you can see when I move this, the plane reflects the, the image. But if you move the plane this way, um, it's not going to project because there's no more geo on this side. So that's it with projection. And then one thing that I do, because I knew that I was going to bring this into After Effects and then add some effects and like fog and particles. So what I like to do is I like to set up just normal lights, turn them off, and then set them in areas that you want to have effects. So what I did is I had one by the character. I had one on the left wall right wall, kind of mid-ground, and then foreground. And what this does is it brings it into After Effects. In After Effects, you could bring in the camera animation and then um, these these lights, which serve as a kind of a, a null or locator for your effects. Um, and I'm going to show you how to, how to import that and my thought process in that. Um, uh, one other thing is the cloak. I knew I wanted to have it animated. So what you do is you can just bring in a plane. I'm just going to do constant shading with lines. So you want enough resolution for your for your geo. Um, but not too much. Um, when it comes to cloth, um, you want to determine, uh, you know, the density of the cloth, the the weight, um, and then the more resolution that you apply to this, the more folds um, the cloth will have. Uh, and for this, I think I went like, I think like seven by seven. And you want to collapse it to make it editable. So you click Make Editable, or you hit C. And then I'll show you what I did. You want to apply the character cloak. And as you can see, it's all the way up here. 
because when I when I exported the PNGs, I exported every PNG in the same resolution. So what you're going to what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, click Enable Access Axes or Shortcut L, and then position this at the top of the cloak. And then what I did is I just deleted any unnecessary um, geo. And this does need a little more resolution. Um, so what I did is you can go to edges, you right click, loop path cut, and then just try and make um, kind of even, even topology. So I think I want maybe a little more. There, I think that's good. So when you have this all prepped and ready, you're going to want to right click on your geo that you want a cloth simulation. You go to simulation, cloth. And right off the bat, this is what happens. It just drops because there's no anchors. There's no, there's nothing to say, hey, we need to hold on to a certain area of this cloak, which would be the shoulders in this case. So you want to select vertices or points. Um, what I did is I just selected up here, up here, and I think that should be good. So you want to you want to go back to your cloth expression. Let me enlarge this. And then you're going to want to go to dresser and then fix points. And there's not a whole lot going on because there's no there's hardly any wind. It's just it's just going off of weight right now. Um, so there's no right answer to to these settings. So you're gonna want to just mess mess around with stuff. Um, you're gonna want to mess with these three first: wind direction, um, x, y, and z. Um, if if the wind is is blowing towards you, you're going to want to do Z. And then build up the wind strength. And then that's, that's looking pretty good. Um, then you can add some um, wind turbulence. And it's a little fast. So again, this is just like a, a trial and error type of setup. But once you have something you like, well, then then you're good. <laughs> um, one of the things that uh, with effects um, that's not just smart to do, but correct to do, is you want to delay your your final output animation. Because if you start your animation like this, it's just going to be a gust. You want to have a consistent um, motion. So what I did is I started my animation at 50. I knew I wanted it to get over the, the kind of weird transition of, um, of the cloth simulation starting. So I felt like 50 was a good um, level of believability so here is my result so this is looking pretty good what you want to do now is go to your render settings or control B in standard Make sure um, it, it's delayed and make sure this is correct. So 50 to 300. And then for this stuff, uh, this, these are relatively good settings um, just, to, just to output this. Um, you don't have to do anything crazy. This should, this should literally take probably a couple minutes to render. Um, go to the Save tab. 
Make sure format is PNG and then alpha channel is selected. Go to depth 16 bit and then um, locate the, the area or the, the file location that you want to render this to. And then after you do that, you have your render, you want to open up After Effects. Here, I'll open up mine. Okay, projection. So let me turn off some of these. So here, ooh, I missed the, I don't have the timeline. Uh, if you're ever working in After Effects and you don't see something that, that, that you want, uh, it's always smart just to go back to, um, to like a default setting or See, that doesn't have a timeline either. There you go. So let's, another thing too, um, you can reorganize your windows by just holding down click on your tab. And then for timeline, I'm gonna want to put it down here. And this, this is usually the, the default After Effects setting. So here I have the the render. I'm gonna go to two view so you can see. This is the camera that I brought in. And to bring in your scene data, so these are the lights that I set up for the locations, and they mirror um, the locations that I that I put it in. You want to double click. Locate your file, okay, projection. Drop it in your timeline and just click extract. And then all your data is here. Now, since you delayed it 50 frames, the camera is gonna be delayed 50 frames. So you're gonna wanna move this over to the start. I like to create a marker at the start, just so there's no guesswork and your camera is ready to go. So since I have the camera set up, I can start bringing in um, effects. So for this instance, I brought in, brought in some particles. And when you bring in a, an effect, like this, you want to hit the uh, the 3D button. And by default, it's not going to it's going to not going to look correct. You want to make sure that your layer is being displayed in the correct uh, location. So you want to move. So that's still not in the same location. So it's a bit down. So as you can see, it mirrors, or it uh, it takes into account the camera. So that's that's what I did with with these particles. And I'll show you all of them. Let's go back to one view. Let's drop it to half. Uh, another thing too is when you're working on projects and your your scene starts to get a little clunky, you go over here. And you can basically say, like, hey, I want this full quality, or half, or third, or quarter. And the lower you go, the quicker it is to, to build. So you always want to you always want to keep keep that into account and just keep on looking at your scene and making sure that everything is correct. So I have my particles all set up. I also have some fog that I dropped in here. Now I want to create that blown out uh, background. 
So I just, I just dropped in a solid and then I applied a gradient because I didn't want just a, just a solid color. I wanted some like variance. I wanted the, the light to be coming up here. Um, so I wanted it to reflect as so. So we have that blown out. So that's looking pretty good. Um, I, I want to create kind of light rays um, coming from the back. So I dropped in a shine, which is trap code shine. And then the default settings are pretty, pretty decent. But you don't have that kind of, you don't have that uh, believability of where the, the light location is. So you want to do a source point. And we want it, we want it probably up here. And then the color is, is not what I want. I want to do none. So it uses the color information on my, ch on my, uh, my image. And then this is too blown out. What you can do is you can go to pre-process, go threshold, and then play around with that. Because here you can see it's, it's, it's using some of the lighter um, color channels from the, the cave. And unless you want it that way, um, cool. But um, this is not what I want. So you want to keep playing with that threshold. So that's pretty good. Go back to my working final. Um, and then just, just kind of, uh, finalizing some stuff. Um, usually I like naming these, which I would recommend naming them, but I was just trying to work as quickly as possible. Um, for this one, I did a curves to kind of pump up, um, the, the contrast. You want to drop the dark and then pump the, pump the light. And then I did an out of focus. Um, you can use any blur. You can go to, you know, Gaussian, camera lens. Camera lens is pretty good for, for this effect. Um, this is kind of faux depth of field. So here you can see. And I'll show you what, what I did. So by default, it just affects the whole image. What you want to do is you want to use the pen tool and kind of determine where you want the eye to look. So this is looking at the foreground first. I don't want that. So you go to your mask and do subtract. And then there's a hard edge. It's kind of hard to tell, but um, what you're going to do is you want to select your adjustment layer, hit F for mask feather, and then just feather a little bit. So there's no hard, hard edges. And then I applied a vignette. And with this instance, with the vignette, by default, it just bases it off the center. You don't want that. What the vignette does is it, 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 it pumps the, uh, it kind of guides the eye a bit. And you don't want the eye right here. You want to move that up to right here. And then just kind of play with your angle view. Just wind it up a little bit. And then the amount's a little too much. So you have your vignette. And then I apply to sharpen. Just to bring some of the detail again. And I like the grittiness of this. And then the handheld, um, which I've used on, I basically use it on every single project I've ever done. Um, I'll do it again. You create an adjustment layer, go to effect, distort, and then transform. And then what you're going to want to do is you want to hit, you want to hold down alt and then click position. And then you want to create a wiggle expression. So wiggle, open. Uh, you need two values for this. I think you could do three values for this, but I just do two. Um, this is very trial and error as well. Um, most times it's just uh, 
the settings that I do is just a little too intense. Um, so I like to start just with 2.8. So that's not terrible. That's actually pretty good. But as you can see, there's some issues with the, the borders of this. Um, this is a kind of quick, easy fix, but you go to scale, and then most times just 101 or 102 would help solve that. So after you have all that, you have all your, your layers enabled. Things are looking good. Do a quick um, RAM preview, which you could just hit spacebar and make sure everything is good. Um, I tend to like watching the animation on a loop for quite, quite a few times. Um, and I like to look at just pieces of the image, like are these particles working? Is the, the light too blown out? Do I want to increase the light over time? Um, just kind of nitpicky stuff. And the goal of the game is to kind of make yourself sick of the, uh, the animation. Um, cause you, you just watch it so many, so many times. Um, and this is good. You want to, you want to kind of look at your animation like, um, someone else is watching it. Um, you know, kind of forget everything that you just did and just look at this and imagine if your your mom or your grandma or your friend is looking at it and what you know what they'll be looking at and obviously since we we brought we're bringing the eye up to to the uh the cave opening that's where we want the the core of the the animation to be and this is looking pretty good so when you have it all set and ready to go you hit you hold down control shift and then question mark to set up the render um i like to use prores but you can select anything and then click the output module and you'll be displayed with this um you can do png sequence you can do avi uh, uh tiff sequence um, i tend to just do quicktime and then prores and then 444 Four is the the highest quality ProRes, but 422 is just fine. So there's no audio. Um, another thing too is do not render audio out of After Effects. It's not. It's gonna crunch everything. It's gonna sound like crap. You're gonna want to bring it into Premiere, and then export everything as a final. So this is ready to go. Okay, and then. Make sure the location is selected, and then hit render. And there you have it. Um, this was a, I hope, quick, quick way of kind of getting you guys to understand projection mapping and what you can do with a single image. And um, you can use any 3D software, really. Um, every 3D software, Blender, Maya, uh, Cinema 4D, they all have uh, projection mapping capabilities. Um, so it's you don't need to spend a lot of money to, to get these effects. Um, all you need is a good imaging or image editor, uh, which there are a bunch that are free now. Um, but but I, I, I've just used Adobe products, well, for just over a decade now and I'm just I'm just used to it and I I fully support Adobe um, and everything that they do and Cinema 4D but thank you guys for watching and looking forward to the next tutorial